Ever since Sony launched their long-awaited XM5 headphones, I've been continually asked one question. Are they better than the XM4s? The Sony XM4s are my favorite noise canceling headphones ever. I am really, really boring about them. But they have been recently replaced by these, the Sony XM5s. They've both got longer names, we'll ignore them. And there has been quite a mixed reaction about these headphones, both from the reviewers, but also from the people within the comments section of my own review. And I think that's because there's one main issue with the XM5s, which is that these still exist. Put simply, for as long as you can buy a pair of XM4 headphones, the XM5s are quite hard to justify. Let's get into the headphone comparison you've been waiting for. Now that the XM5s are here, the price for the XM4s has been tumbling really, really quickly. In fact, in the UK, you can grab them for as little as £260 if you shop around. By comparison, the XM5s retail at £379 or $399. So if price is a big consideration for you and you're already sweating over the price of the XM5s, that saving of over £100, $100 is really hard to ignore. The XM5s feature a brand new design. I'm a big fan of this. It looks more modern, less utilitarian than the XM4s, but they are unmistakably Sony XM headphones. They're also really deceptive. I thought in the product shots for the XM5s that they were much bigger than the XM4s, but they're not. They're pretty much the same size, whether it's the band or the ear cups. If you put them side by side, they're pretty much identical. However, there are three big differences between these two headphones when it comes to design. The first is the weight. Now the XM4s aren't particularly heavy headphones, really, they're quite nicely balanced, but the XM5s are almost comically light. The second is the XM5's so-called noiseless design, which basically means they don't creak, crack, or make any kind of noise when you put them on your head or twist them around in your hands. Now this will be good news for people that did not like the fact that the XM4s are apparently quite noisy. I've never really experienced this myself, but I've seen lots of people in the comment sections of my videos about these basically moan about the fact that they make a noise on your head, cracking, creaking, all that sort of stuff. If you had a problem with that, or if that put you off the XM4s, trust me, the XM5s are completely silent. And the last big difference is probably the most controversial. The XM5s don't fold. So the XM4s do fold like that. The XM5s don't fold at all. You have some movement obviously with the cups, but there's no way to fold these headphones. This doesn't bother me at all, but it has created a bit of a stir on the internet and it has had quite a big impact literally on the case, which I'll get onto later. Now, when it comes to comfort, I'm afraid the XM4s are still the clear winner. There's a few reasons for this, but mainly it's the padding. So the padding on the XM4s, both the padding here on the headband, but also more importantly, the padding on the ear cups is just a lot softer and a lot fuller than the XM5s. Now the XM5s aren't uncomfortable headphones at all. They're still very comfy and if you don't A-B test the two, if you only have these for example, you probably won't be that disappointed with the comfort. But it is, like I mentioned in my original review, it's a little bit too thin for my liking this foam. It's just a little bit, it, could, it needs more stuff in there. There's something about it where Sony, I don't know if they've kind of cheaped out on it or, or whatever, but it's just less comfortable than the XM4s. Battery life for these headphones is pretty much identical. They both knock on the door of 30 hours with noise cancelling turned on. That's fine. As I've always said, if you can get a pair of headphones that have more than 20 hours of battery life, which most over-the-ear noise cancelling headphones do these days, you're golden. Now the XM5s do gain an additional two hours with noise cancelling turned off, which takes them up to a maximum of 40 hours. But I don't know, I don't think many people will use these without noise cancelling turned on, and 30 hours is absolutely plenty. More importantly, the XM5s have retained the XM4's fantastic stamina when it comes to standby time, and that's because you can turn them off. Are you listening, Apple? When it comes to controls, they're both pretty much identical. They both have two buttons, that's it. One of them is for power, and the other one is for, on the XM5s, noise cancelling slash ambient mode, and on the XM4s, it's the custom button. I much prefer the XM5s. Having a more obvious button for something that is actually a feature of the headphones makes sense. I never did anything with that custom button. It just got left as a default custom button. So yeah, I much prefer the physical controls on the XM5s. These do still retain the annoying touch sensitive controls, which I've never been a fan of. 
Right, on to the cases for these headphones. If you know me by now, you'll know that I am obsessed with headphone cases. They have to be good. They have to protect the headphones. They can't be too heavy. They have to be robust. You have to basically put your headphones in the headphone case and not worry about them at all. The AirPods Max get this hideously wrong, but the Sony XM4s, I think, and the XM, threes before them have had the best case on the market for quite a long time. And that means the XM5's case has quite a lot to live up to. It's huge. So if we compare the two, that is the XM5 case. This is the XM4 case. It's quite a difference. Now there is of course one main reason for this, which is what I mentioned earlier, which is the fact that the XM4s fold like that to go nice and neatly in the case, but the XM5s, for whatever reason, do not fold. So they have to go into the case like that. Now, Sony has tried to counter this by introducing a unique and slightly weird feature for the XM5 case, and it basically revolves around these built-in creases. So when you take the headphones out and this is empty, you can theoretically squash it. I don't get this at all. I think the idea is that when you put it in your bag, and you've got the headphones out, if you've got something in your bag that squashes it together, it takes up less space in your bag. In reality, that doesn't work. I think the folds are way too stiff for that to happen naturally, really. You have to literally push them in for it to go like that. And when you do that, the case doesn't stay compressed. It kind of lifts back up. And even if it does compress, it's not that much smaller. And actually the depth of the case isn't the issue. It's the sheer size of it. It's just a very big case. Now, Personally, it doesn't bother me. It's been a little bit big at times carrying it around in my backpack, but I don't really miss the XM4 case. The most important thing for me is that this retains rigid, strong, and capable of protecting these expensive headphones. If size, when it comes to the headphone case, is a big deal for you, the XM4s are the better option. There's no question about it. The XM4s were always billed as the leading noise cancelling headphones on the market. I completely agree with that. Having used loads of different noise cancelling headphones, they are streets ahead. Good news, Sony have somehow done it. They've made the XM5s better at noise cancelling than the XM4s, and it is noticeably better. When you AB these two for noise cancelling, the XM4s do dampen the outside world fantastically, but the sound that does come through, which always happens with noise cancelling headphones, it doesn't completely get rid of everything, the sound that comes through on these retains a lot of the high frequencies. This isn't the case with the XM5s. These appear to dampen everything across the entire frequency range, which means the world gets much quieter compared to the XM4s. Both of these headphones have ambient mode, which is the ability to let in the outside sound whenever you want to, and it was never very good on the XM4s, really. The XM5s, it's better. It's still nowhere near as good as the transparency mode on the AirPods Max, but that's to be expected. They are just fantastic in that regard. But if that's something that really matters to you, you will get slightly better ambient mode performance on the XM5s. But when it comes to noise cancelling, just to confirm, the XM5s are noticeably better than the XM4s. On to the big one, sound. Now I tested both of these headphones as always, out of the box with their own EQ profiles. I always do that because I wanna know what Sony thinks we should hear before we add our own EQ. Now I tried out four different test tracks, Unfinished Sympathy by Massive Attack, Sledgehammer by Peter Gabriel, Breathe Again by Pop Evil, and Easy On Me by Adele. Now on Unfinished Sympathy, it reveals how much more pronounced the mid-range is on the XM5s. So as noted earlier, I love the sound profile on the XM4s, and that's partly because that mid-range is scooped a little bit, it's kind of dipped a little bit. I just like that sound. On the XM5s, and particularly on Unfinished Sympathy, it is, it's definitely more middly, which is a little bit less pleasing for me. However, both of these headphones cope with that massive sub kick drum at the start and throughout the track. It just cuts through everything else in the track as it should do. It's not overwhelming. If anything, the XM4s are a little bit more bassy, but it's not it's not massive, and I've always liked the kind of fairly refined bass response on the XM4s. That is pretty much carried across the XM5s. There's just a little bit less bass. When it comes to Sledgehammer, immediately that track feels a lot wider on the XM4s compared to the XM5s, and there seems to be a bit more top end going on. They're a bit brighter, these XM4s, when playing back Sledgehammer compared to the XM5s. That said, both of these headphones cope with that track very well, but it's definitely a slightly more exciting sound on the XM4s. On to Breathe Again by Pop Evil. This is a massive track, loads of stuff going on, heavily compressed. It needs a very good pair of headphones to make out what's going on. 
and it sounds better on the XM4s. It just feels fuller, more alive, and again, that track loses some of its excitement on the XM5s. Now, things do get a bit better for the XM5s on Easy On Me by Adele. So on that track, on the XM5s, the vocals are a bit bright, which isn't a bad sound, but it just makes them sound a little bit less natural. Whereas that more middly response on the XM5s just works really well with that very simple voice and piano track. It definitely feels more natural on the XM5s, which I think will please a lot of people, People who want a flatter response for that kind of music, the XM5s definitely perform better than the XM4s. Now that is quite a simple sound test, but that is what I'm all about. Other people have done much more in-depth comparisons between these two headphones, so it's worth doing a bit of research if sound is a really important factor for you. But for me personally, if I had to pick one pair of headphones out of these two based purely on the sound, it would be the XM4s. But this is such a personal thing. And the good news is that both of these headphones sound fantastic and very few people are gonna have both and use both regularly. I'm doing a test here, which is quite unnatural. You're not gonna sit there switching between your XM4s and your XM5s. If you buy either of these headphones, they both sound good enough to make that purchase worthwhile. It's also worth bearing in mind that the XM4s and the XM5s respond very well to EQ treatment. So if you're the sort of person who likes to tweak their own sound, you can't go wrong with either of these headphones. Now, one of the biggest failings of the XM4s is their call quality. As I've said before, I don't use headphones like this for taking calls. I always use my AirPods Pro, but I am acutely aware that not many people like the XM4s when it comes to calls. Well, I've got some good news. The XM5s are definitely better for taking calls. My testing isn't the most thorough, so you might wanna look elsewhere for more in-depth analysis, but my tests revealed that sound quality on both sides, both for me and for the person that I'm calling, are definitely better on the XM5s than they are on the XM4s. I would have no problem using these as calling headphones if I needed to. Now, both of these have auto pause and resume. So when you take the headphones off your head, the music stops. And when you put them back on, the music plays again. That's very convenient. Both have smart assistant integration for things like and they both have the immensely annoying speaking recognition thing, which pauses the music when you start talking. In my experience, it's completely pointless. Just take your headphones off and talk to someone. You can also connect both of these to two Bluetooth devices at once, which works really well in my experience. They're also compatible with LDAC for high resolution audio streaming on Android devices. I've never fully tested that, but I will do at some stage. There's nothing really separating these two beyond the normal headphone stuff, but I just don't know what else can be done with a pair of headphones to set them apart from the competition. So if additional features are your thing, they're pretty much the same. The Sony XM5s are a brilliant pair of headphones. In isolation, they sound great, they have the best noise cancelling on the market, they're well built, they're comfortable, and they get by pretty well during telephone calls. But when you pitch them against their predecessor, things do start to unravel. I'm afraid, given that you can pick these up for over £100 or over $100 less than the XM5s, makes these the better buy for a lot of people. The better noise cancelling and the updated design on the XM5s are fantastic and I'm not taking anything away from that. But do they justify that extra spend at the moment? I don't think so. That is unless you simply want the latest and greatest, which I completely understand. And if that's the case, you're not gonna be disappointed with the XM5s. They're a lovely pair of noise cancelling headphones. But if you wanna save some money and have been pondering over the XM5s for a little while now, I'd just grab yourself a pair of XM4s while the price is so low. Now, if you want to find out more about what I thought about the XM5s, keep watching for a link to my full review.